All right. Well, it's good to see you in church. Uh, some are here, some are at home, and uh, but it's good to have you uh, joining us by Facebook Live or however you're joining us uh, tonight, and uh, thankful to have you uh, with us. We're going to start by singing. We don't have, uh, uh, you probably don't have a songbook at home. You might, but you'll probably know the song very well, Thank God I'm Free. So that's what we'll sing. If you're here, you can stand with us and we'll sing, Thank God I'm Free. For a long time I traveled Down a long lonely road My heart was so heavy And sin I sank low Then I heard about Jesus What a wonderful hour I'm so glad that I found out That he would bring me out his saving power thank god i am free 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 from this world of sin i've been washed in the blood of jesus i've been born again hallelujah i'm saved 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 by his wonderful grace I'm so glad that I found out that he would bring me up and show me the way. Like a bird out of prison that's taken its flight. Like the blind man that God gave back his sight. Like a poor wretched beggar who found fortune and fame. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me up to his holy name. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved. By his wonderful grace I'm so glad that I found out That he would bring me up Sing the chorus one more time, acapella Thank God I am free, free, free From this world of sin I've been washed in the blood of Jesus I've been born again Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me up and show me the way. I love that song. That's a good song. Let's pray together. Lord God, Father, we love you. We thank you that we are free uh, and we're made free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for that. And Father, thank you for your word that makes us free. And Lord, I pray that you please help us. <clears throat> That'll be part of the message tonight, uh, that we are free. And I, I thank you for that. I thank you for the freedom and the liberty we have in Christ. Father, I thank you for the freedom and liberty we have in this country. Uh, I know there's people probably tonight thinking, I don't feel very free because I'm having to stay at home. But Lord, it could be a lot worse. We could be in some other places right now. We could be in prisons. We could be in foreign countries. We could be uh, in, in some really rough spots. And we're, we're not. And so Lord, I thank you for the liberty we have in our country. So, Lord, I pray that you bless tonight. I pray that you bless in a powerful way that you show yourself. And, uh, Lord, bless our people. Lord, we're looking forward to the day when we can get back to normal. Uh, we, we want to get back to just being able to look through this, uh, this crowd and, and see people's faces here. And, Father, I pray that you please make that be soon. Lord, I pray for people that are having uh, economic issues now because of all this. And I pray that you bless and help there. And, Lord, please give our, our leaders wisdom about all that's going on. And, Lord, please bring this quickly to an end. Uh, I pray for people's health. I pray that you'd continue to watch over our people and keep them healthy um, and just bless them. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, you can be seated. I've got a couple of announcements. One, uh, we did the Senior Saints Luncheon this week, and, uh, man, that was a real blessing. I think we, we uh, got about 60-something uh, meals out. It's ringing a little bit up here. It's a little bit hot up here, so it's ringing 
Um, but anyways, they got about 60 meals out. So uh, Ms., I, I want to thank some people. I want to thank Miss Kinney. I want to thank uh, Miss Amy Bishop, uh, Melissa Kinney, Amy Bishop, and Susan Rose for, uh, for making the meals that they made. I don't know if there was more people involved in that, but I at least know of those three that made them. And then uh, several people took them and, and dropped them off. Uh, I went to people's doors and brought them packages of food, and they just thanked me and thanked me and thanked me as if I had made it and brought it to them. And uh, I told them very quickly, I'm just a delivery boy. Uh, somebody made this food for you. And they prepared it and then packaged it all up and did it. And uh, so I just want to say thank you to uh, the ladies and the, the gentlemen, whoever were involved in that uh, and putting that together. Thank you for that. That was a blessing. Um, I want to thank... Um, uh, uh, those that helped also with delivering it, because I know several people went out and delivered. So I want to thank you for that. All right, Sunday school. We're going to try to do some things to get Sunday school going a little better um, with since we're doing it this way with Facebook Live. So we're going to have, we'll try to have a young adults, a college and career age Sunday school class um, on, uh, on their page going uh, for the Sunday morning during Sunday school time from 945 to 1030. Uh, so we'll have that. We'll try to have a teen class going on. And the adult class will be starting and tell people, share those with people. We'll be doing the new converts class. So we'll be starting all that, doing that. It'll be a great opportunity for people to get in on some foundational truths that maybe they just want to brush up on. So that'll be from 945 to 1030. Uh, young adults, college career, teens, new converts. And, of course, the ladies class uh, will have theirs as well. So if, um, if you have any ideas how we can make that any better for people, let us know. We'll try to do some more things. Uh, as well. We've been giving you updates on Miss Laura. Miss Laura is, uh, is now, she was in a nursing home um, and, uh, and checked out, went home, and then she had fallen and broken her upper leg and went into a hospital, then went to a rehab center, stayed there, and then they um, took, sent her from there to another uh, nursing home where she's at now. And uh, so just pray that that would go well. Um, and uh, they're doing things, different things with her medications, things like that. Just pray for her about all that's going on with that, that, uh, that it'll go smoothly. And um, uh, you can understand that sometimes when your medications get all uh, messed up, you don't think quite clearly. So just be in prayer about those things, um, if you would, please. And then we're going to try to do something maybe this Sunday. Help me pray about it, but maybe this Sunday night. Uh, Sunday morning will be completely normal, everything will be normal. But Sunday night at the normal time, but we may do something where if you've got questions uh, about things from the Bible or things that are going on in the world that maybe have a Bible connection to it, um, you can submit those questions. And then we're going to try, maybe, maybe on Sunday night, I haven't decided for sure yet that it'll be this Sunday night, we'll try to do um, answers to some of those questions and just walk you through the Bible of what some answers might be to those questions. So if you have some questions that maybe you've thought of in the past, um, can you, if you can send, send those to me or somebody from the staff, let us know, uh, put it on the, on the page there so we can see it, uh, message one of us and let us know so we can be looking at those and, uh, and try to get you a good answer that we can study out and, uh, and prepare for you. So we're looking forward to doing that. And several churches are doing that right now. It's a great opportunity to be able to do that since we're kind of here like this and get everybody, uh, some answers, some questions. And so, uh, we may even do it where you can ask some questions if we pick, if we have a topic, we'll let you just ask questions at the same time, back and forth while we're even doing the, the service. So, um, so be, be thinking about that, be praying about that, that we would have all those things uh, together. All right, let's sing one more song together. Um, I think it's 562, and it's I'm on the winning side. <clears throat> Great song. Let's stand if you're in here. Uh, let's stand and we'll sing I'm on the winning side. You probably know it at home. Let's sing it together. <clears throat> Once I drifted out in sin, had no hope, no joy within, and my soul was burdened down with pride. Then my Savior came along, and he showed me I was wrong. Now I know I'm on the winning side. Well, I am on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. Out in sin, no more will I abide. I've been listed in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. From the straight and narrow way, I was drifting every day. 
out upon the waters deep and wide. But it all is over now, glory light is on my brow, and my soul is on the winning side. Well, I am on the winning side, yes, I'm on the winning side. Out in sin, no more will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. I will never have a fear, for my Lord is ever near. And in Him so often I confide. He's the keeper of my soul since I gave him full control and he placed me on the winning and sing it out well I am on the winning side yes I'm on the winning side out in sin no more will I abide I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. Very, very good. You can be seated. <clears throat> All right. Well, for those that are here, and if you're at home, you get ready. It's offering time. And uh, really, it is an opportunity to give back to the Lord a little bit of what the Lord has uh, provided you with. Um, for the most part, most of our people that I know of um, are staying in work. Um, the, the, the government has even, I think we got our stimulus checks today, uh, in the, in the bank. Most people are, are receiving those and, and that's, uh, that's a blessing that they were able to have those types of things. So let me just encourage you, just be faithful to the Lord in giving and, uh, and, and just, you know, as the Lord has prospered you, um, you do, you do, uh, what God has told you to do about, uh, trying to be faithful to, uh, support here. Um, as we try to support what we're doing here locally and what we're trying to do in other places, we gave some money to uh, from our, our missions fund to a missionary the other day uh, to try to help him. He sent me a message back, so they bought um, a lot of groceries, and uh, and they're using that in, that in the country they're at um, to give a week's worth of groceries to people um, as they come to them, and along with the gospel, it's opening a door for them to be able to get the gospel to them. So that's a blessing, and um, so. Uh, so if you can give, can please continue to do that and uh, try to be faithful. There's going to show you different ways you can mail to the P.O. box. Don't mail to the physical address of the church. If you're going to mail, mail to the P.O. box. It's going to be on the screen. Uh, P.O. box uh, 1786, and that's in Copperas Cove, Texas, 76522. If you're just listening and you're not uh, seeing it, you can, you can definitely do that. Um, or you can do it by the text, or you can do it by the online giving. Let's pray together for the offering. Lord God, Father, we love you and we thank you. We ask you to bless now in just a, a, a powerful way in the finances of our church as we continue to try to uh, do what we're doing here and meet the needs of people that are in need. I pray that you please help us with that. I pray that you please help as we try to help our missionaries and continue to support them. Lord, I pray for those missionaries that are maybe on debutation right now and things have been stopped. I pray for those that are in foreign countries where uh, things are not as readily available and they're, they're in quarantine or, or in isolation in some way. And Lord, I pray that you please bless and help there. I pray that you help all of us that are in this find ways to get the gospel to people and be an example of you. Now, Father, we love you and we ask you to bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
You know, we just celebrated Easter and our Lord rose, you know, and it's great that we serve a living God, a God that's alive, Jesus Christ. Yes. You know, it says in Luke 1940, when the Pharisees tried to get the disciples to quit praising God, he said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And we can see that God is alive in his, in nature. He's alive, I can see him in each chapter of his word. He's alive, I can hear him in each sound I've ever heard. He's alive, he's alive, my God's alive. Though he died at Calvary, he rose again to set us free, my God's alive. Now he sits upon his throne to be our judge, and him alone, my God's alive. He's alive, I can see him in each hummingbird that flies. He's alive, I can feel him in each tear that dims the eyes. He's alive, he's alive, my God's alive. Died at Calvary, he rose again to set us free, my God's alive. Now he sits upon his throne to be our judge, and him alone, my God's alive. He's alive, I can see him in each flower pot that blooms. He's alive, I can feel him when his spirit fills the room. He's alive, he's alive, my God's alive. Though he died at Calvary, he rose again to set us free, my God's alive. Now he sits upon his throne to be our judge and him alone my God's alive my God's alive he's alive my God's alive he's alive he's alive my God's alive he's alive Good. Okay, if, uh, if you've got your Bibles with you, and I hope you do, uh, they're at home or if you're watching or listening, uh, Galatians chapter 5, if you, if you can go there with us, Galatians chapter 5, and, uh, and we'll start in verse number 16, Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 16. Uh, Galatians 5, 16, it says this, For this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. I'm not going to go into all the, the definitions of all those today, but um, you'll understand those are not, those are not good, obviously. Um, and then it says, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. That's a great, that's a great uh, spot right there. Have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. Um, if we live in this, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit.
Let us not be desirous of being Lord, provoking one another, envying one another. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about walking in the Spirit and maybe asking this question um, of ourselves. Why, why am I producing the wrong type of fruit? And what I think you had uh, leading up to this is why am I producing rotten fruit? And uh, why am I not producing the fruit in my life of loy, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance? Why am I not producing that in my life? What we typically do a lot of times is, uh, and we're going to start a study that really is, is going to go very, very long with this, and it'll go, we'll have a lot of details to it. The reason why it'll be so long is because there's going to be, we're going to go through each part of the fruit of the Spirit. But the, the issue with this is sometimes people say, well, I'm, I'm not producing fruit in my life. I mean, I'm not, not producing love in my life, so what do I do? Well, I try harder to love. But that's not what it says. Um, it, I'm not having joy in my life. Well, I try harder to have joy. I try harder to be happy. That's, that's not what it says. It's saying if you're walking in the Spirit, what will come out of you will be love. So if you're having a problem with your love, you're having a problem with your joy, you're having a love with your peace, you're having a love with your gentleness or goodness or your faith or your meekness, or even your temperance, your, your self-control of yourself, your temperance, if you're having trouble with those things, it's, it may not be because of a lack of, I need to try harder in those areas, although it probably wouldn't be bad to try in those areas, but that's not the, the where you get the fruit by trying harder to get the fruit. Or it's not, you don't get the fruit, the fruit is not a matter of, you ever bitten into those uh, plastic, try to pick up somebody's fruit and it's a plastic and you think, oh man, this isn't good, and you put it back. Well, what Christians do a lot of times is they, they want to tape the, tru- the, the fruit onto their onto their onto them and, and say, well, I, I look, look, I look, I at least look like I got love. I at least look like I have joy. I look like I have peace, but we really don't, aren't producing really anything. Um, in fact, what people are producing in their lives are the things that he said were the wrong things. We're seeing adultery and fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, all those types of things. People are seeing those show up in their lives. And you say, well, why am I, why am I not having the fruit that I should be having, and why am I instead seeing fornication in my life? Why am I instead seeing my anger problems? Why am I, in, uh, instead of those things, um, having drunkenness? Why am I, instead of those things, envying other people? Why, instead of those things, am I having strife? Why am I having these issues? Why is this happening in my life? And I, and I, I wrote some questions on a Facebook thing I sent earlier. So I might say this, and people have come to me even lately and said, well, I, am, am I even saved? What's wrong with me? How come I, how come I, I, I got angry? How come I'm having sin problems? Am I even saved? Why am I producing? Because this is what it says in verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, meaning they're going to show up. You're walking in the flesh. It's going to show up in your flesh. You're walking in the spirit. It's going to show up in you. The fruit of the Spirit is going to, it's going, it's not, i, I got to try harder. No, it's going to show up simply because you're rooted into it. Listen, if you're rooted into the, into the, the, bre- the, the main part of the tree, if you're in that vine, then you're going to produce the fruit that comes from that. And so if you're rooted into Christ and you're walking in the Spirit, you're going to start producing the fruit of the Spirit in your life. And if you're walking in the flesh, you're not walking with God, then I'm going to tell you, you're going to see adultery in our lives. We're going to see fornication in our lives. You say, well, I'm not physically committing adultery, but you're thinking it. And so you're going to see that in our lives. It's because you say, well, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Well, this is what we're trying to answer. This is where we're trying to go. And so we want to kind of look at that and figure this out. Let me just, let's back up for a minute and just catch an idea that I want you to get. Because it starts off in chapter 5 and verse 1, talking about stand fast in the liberty where the Christ has made us free. And that's why I wanted to do this thing about thank God I'm free. Um, and uh, Romans even talks about, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Romans 6 talks about the freedom. We're free. We're free from bondage of sin. In Galatians 5, we're free from the law that shows us our sinfulness. We're free from all those things. And so the very first point I want you to get tonight and think through as we're starting, this is the first message, and I want you to, to try to share it with people because this I'm telling you this is one of the biggest problems we've got in the church. This is one of the biggest problems. If, if we could fix the problem of walking in the Spirit, we would fix strife. We would fix broken marriages. We'd fix all kinds of stuff. 
if we could just fix walking in the Spirit. And people say, well, I hear preachers all the time say, you've got to walk in the Spirit, got to walk in the Spirit, but no preacher ever tells us how to walk in the Spirit. They just say, be filled with the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. Nobody ever tells you how that looks, what that looks like. So we're going to try to start showing you what that even looks like tonight. But the first thing I want you to get is talking about the freedom we have. So before the freedom we've got, I want to, the first point is this, we were in prison. We were in prison to something. And let me tell you how that works, okay? So in the, in the beginning, God created uh, man, and man was perfect. It was, man was perfect, had a perfect relationship with God. Um, he had all the provisions of God, the trees, the fruit, everything that he needed to have. Uh, he had the presence of God. He's walking with God uh, there daily and instructions. Uh, God had told him everything he's supposed to do. You can eat of this, but you can't eat of that. He had all, everything he needed. He had it. It was perfect. It was a perfect connection with, with God. And then, of course, you know, Satan or the serpent comes in and, and beguiles or tricks or, 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 or is subtle and, and all those things and tries to get um, uh, Eve and gets her thinking about the wrong things and gets her taking the wrong things. And she does do that and Adam along with her. And, you know, sin enters in the world right there. And the Bible says in Romans 5, 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin... And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And you know that from that point right there, when they ate and they were in sin, you see them start to now, instead of being in the presence of God, they're hiding themselves from the presence of God. And people are doing that today. They're, they're, they, they don't even realize they're doing it, but they're trying to run away as far as they can away from God. They're trying to get out of the presence of God. And they're, and they're trying to cover themselves up. Man is trying to do that today and, and, uh, and try to cover up what they've got. And so... Um, so, so obviously there has to be um, death that comes, there's a shedding of blood, there's all kinds of things that happen. You see, you see what happens right after that, you see them have their children, you see Cain and Abel, you see murder enter, you see lying and envying, and everything starts coming in. So the bondage that we have, the bondage that we, that we are in, the bondage to sin, it started way back there. And it's been passed along all men. And so we've always been in a bondage of sin. But then what happens is eventually God institutes some laws and gives some laws to man. And those laws, some are written in our hearts and some are written in tablets. And, and those laws are there to show us our sinfulness and show us a righteous God. And so we're in bondage to sin. But then the other thing we're in bondage to is the law is got us, it puts, some, it puts us in check, puts some parameters around our life. You can't go this far this way, can't go this way. If you do this, you have this issue. And you have those types of things that are going on between the law and between our sin. And so we're still in Galatians. I want you to look in Galatians chapter 3 and look at verse 19, and we'll kind of just get the idea of this. Galatians three nineteen. He says, Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgression. So God gave the law because of sinfulness. Because our sin, he gave the law. He says, Till the seed should come, to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily, righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. That's who we are. We're all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, see, see, here we are, we're in bondage to, to sin, and we're in, under the, the bondage of the, the law showing us our sinfulness. But there's nothing we can do about it. And it says in verse 23, But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up until the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after the faith, that faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. And so it, it says in verse 26, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So we were in this, in this, 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 this shut up in this thing of the law and of our sin. But as soon as we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we're made free from the bondage of sin. And we're also made free from the law that's over, over us at that time too. So we're made free, so we're given freedom, and that's the liberty that he's talking about in chapter 5. But let's look at, verse, at, at chapter 4 and verse 1, let's see it again, because he just kind of reiterates it. In chapter 4 and verse 1, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But as under tutors and governors, until the time appointed of the father, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage 
under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, this is great, when the fullness of the time was come, was come God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. This is wonderful. So he came in under the law, fulfilled the law, and became a curse, it's going to say, became a curse for us to redeem us that were a curse under that law, to set us free from that and give us the adoption of sons. In verse 6, it says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth his spirit, the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So this is what we see there. We were, used to be in bondage, and now we're set free. And that's why in chapter 5 and verse 1, we have been given this liberty. So I want you to get it now. We were in prison. We were in prison to our sin. We were in prison to the law. But as soon as we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that, 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 the, the, the dominion of sin has no more reign over us. We're free from that. And the law has made us free from the law. We're, we're, the faith has made us free from the law. And so now we have liberty. And so you say, well, praise God, I've got liberty. And that is, what a wonderful thing. I've got the liberty that I'm now not in that condition I was at before. But you'd say, well, but how, do I, how come I still struggle? How come I still have problems sometimes? And that's what he's going to go into here. And, and this is what happens sometimes. People do, is they think, well, what I have to do is I have to add more law so that I can get rid of my sin problems. But see, that's exactly what Galatians is trying to say. It's not more rules and more laws that will keep you and get you to be a more holy person. Holiness is going to come by you learning how to walk in the Spirit. So you could say, well, that guy that's in prison, uh, he's in prison over there. I see him. He's over there in prison. He's in those bars. And look, he's, everything is so spotless in that prison. Everything's in its, in its place. Everything's clean. His, his, his uniform that he's got is, is crisp and clean. Everything's clean. He says, yes, sir, when the, when the boss comes around. He says, yes, sir. Well, everything is just, it's, it's perfect. He's not doing the wrong things, eating the wrong things, going the wrong places. He's, he's perfect. The problem is, that doesn't make him holy. It doesn't make him holy. And here's the real, real problem. Now, watch now. He's never, he, if he never learns how to walk in the Spirit, when he is set free from the prison, and he walks out in the world to start walking, he doesn't know how to contain his flesh. He doesn't know how to walk in this world without fulfilling the lust of his flesh. He says, I'm free. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm free. I'm out. I, he kisses the ground. He starts walking. But then he doesn't even know how to even do anything now. And so what the, what, the, what the Bible is saying is, it's not a matter of, I've got I to run back and jump back in the jail so that I can be clean and holy again. That's not it. I need to learn how to walk in the Spirit so that I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's the key. That is the key to what we're talking about. What has happened in the, in the book of Galatians is the, the, uh, the Jewish, they would say maybe Jewish believers, but those people that were coming in there, maybe they are, maybe they're not, they're telling them all those Gentiles, listen, if what you really got to do to be right with God, you got to get back under all the laws. Circumcise and do this and keep this day and keep that. Then you can really be holy with God. And Paul is rebuking that and saying that you didn't start off by the law. You started off by faith and by the Spirit. And so you're going to be made perfect, not by the law, but by faith and by the Spirit. And that's why when it goes through, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Against such there is no law. And then in verse 25, if, you, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And so verse 16, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, there's a battle that's going on, and that's why verse 17 says, For the flesh, the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to another. And so the first point I want you to get is the prison we used to be in, but when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we're set free from the prison. But now I want you to see the next point is this, the problem that we now have. The problem that we now have. The problem that we now have is, I'm still in this flesh, I'm set free, but I'm still in this body of flesh, and now I've got a turmoil that's going on. And I want you to look, you can maybe hold your place right there, and look over at Romans chapter number 7 with me. And uh, <clears throat> I love this little spot in Romans chapter 7, but to me it's the biggest tongue twister in the Bible. And, and maybe you know where I'm talking about now that you heard me say that. But in, in Romans chapter 7, and verse number 18, 
we'll look at that. Romans 7 and verse number 18. Here's what it says. For I know that in me, but watch what he says, that is in my flesh. Remember, the flesh is warring against the spirit. I didn't get saved. I, I was 26 years old when I got saved. That means there was a lot of living after my flesh that took, on, that, that took place. My flesh had some things that it lusted after and it desired, that it wanted. My flesh said, hey, it's a hot day. I need this to drink. Well, now it's a hot day. I'm looking for iced tea. And that day, I wasn't looking for iced tea. It was something else. My, my body was saying, give it to me. And I'm saying, I don't, I don't know that I really want to do that anymore. Give it to me. I want it. You ever tried to fast? Anybody ever tried to fast before? You try to fast for more than maybe breakfast? You try to fast past breakfast? You know, fast a whole day, maybe two days, three days, four days, five days, a week? You try to fast before? You know what your flesh does? Your flesh says, you are not going to do this to me. Your flesh says, why? You say, yes, I am, and your flesh says, you just watch and see. You just watch. I told you that one time I was driving, and I thought, I'm going to fast, and I, don't think, I didn't make it even halfway through the day because I drove by Dairy Queen. Dairy, Dairy Queen, I think, is of the devil whenever you're, you know what, there's a Dairy Queen in every town in Texas just about, so it's hard for a Texan to even fast. I don't know what the deal is with that. We'll have to see. But the issue is, your flesh says no. Your flesh raises up and says, I'm going to do what I want to do. And so what he says in verse 18, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Now see, I'm going to tell you, some of you have even recently come to me and asked me this question right here. Listen, I want to do good, preacher. I want to do the right thing, but I keep finding when I'm wanting to do good, I end up doing some, something I know I shouldn't be doing. What is going on with me? And I say, well, you're in good company, at least the fact that, that, that Paul was going through some of these things. At least he said it. He says in verse number 19, For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. And everybody in your home you could say amen to this right now. This is, the, this is the, the case. Verse 20, Now if I do that which I would not, there's no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Let's keep reading. For I delight in the law of, the, of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And watch verse 24. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. He said, I want to keep my mind uh, in, the, in, the, in the right state with God. With God, I want to be doing the things that God has written. I want to, I want to apply those things that God's written to my life. I, I want to do those things. He said, but I'm finding a conflict that when I say, I, you know what, I'm, this week I'm going to live for God. This week I'm going to, I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray. I'm going to read my Bible this week. I'm going to read a whole chapter. I'm going to read a, a whole book of the Bible. I'm going to, every day I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it. And then you find the next morning that when you go to set your alarm to get up, your body says, uh-uh, you're hitting the snooze button. And, and you say, look, I'm going to read my Bible before I even eat. And when you wake up, you, you go in there, and, uh, and the first thing that happens is you think Fruit Loops would be so good right now. And, and so you start having problems. You see, your flesh wants you to do the opposite. And some of you are fighting, fighting way bigger battles than just Fruit Loops in the morning. They're fighting battles. You're saying, what is going on with me? Why am I fighting this battle? What's interesting is Romans 6 has an answer we're going to get to in a minute. But Romans 7 talks about the fight. But then look at Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation of them that are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And I've preached several times out of Romans 8. The whole book, uh, the whole chapter of Romans 8 is about the spiritual walk. And we'll get to that at some point in some later deal. But th there's a battle that's going on. In Romans 1 all the way through 5, it's talking to you about salvation, all of sin, and telling you how salvation is. In Romans chapter 6, we'll get to it in a minute, it's talking about the fact that now my old man's dead and my new man's alive, and now I'm walking with, with, uh, with the Lord. And then chapter 7, there's the battle that's going on, and chapter 8, the, vic the victory. And that's what you see, and that's how Romans is laid out. But the truth of the matter is, there's a fight. There's a fight that's going on. 
And most people know that there's a fight. Most people don't talk about there's a fight, but most people know that there's a fight. And they're saying, and they're screaming out, how do I fight this battle? How do I get victory in my life? I'm telling you, it's walking in the Spirit is how you get the victory. And so we're trying to get there. And I've read it to you all ago, Galatians 5, 17, for the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do that that you would. You say, I would do this, but man, I'm having trouble doing it. Of course, you know, in 1 Corinthians 10, in verse, uh, verse 12, I'll read this verse to you, you know the verse very well. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who not suffer you be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you'll be able to bear it. What's interesting in that section of Scripture, right there, most people can quote that verse. Most people don't ever back up and look at the four temptations that are in that chapter that precede the temptation that's common to man. And I've preached on them before. And, and one of them is, is uh, the first one in that is delay. Moses delayed coming down, and they said, there was a delay, and they said, well, let's just make a cap, let's go. There's, that's a common temptation. Man's flesh says, I don't want to wait. And I'm going to tell you what, that's common to man. Flesh says, I don't want to wait. Another one, I'm, I'm, I may get the order messed up, but another one is they were discouraged in the way, the, the Bible says. They were discouraged. The way was tough, and they got discouraged. I'm telling you, sometimes the flesh is saying, uh, listen, I want to apply the pre preacher. I want to apply the Bible. I think it's right. I want to apply it to my, to, to my life. But let me tell you, it's it's tough sometimes to make this application because for some twenty something years or or eighteen years or or maybe forty something years, I've been living a certain way, and now you're telling me to put off the old man and put on the new man and walk in the spirit. And my flesh is saying, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, you're doing it this way," and my my spiritual man is saying, "I want to do it that way." And I'm telling you. It's tough, and I get discouraged in the way. And that's a common demand. That's the second one in that in second, uh, first Corinthians chapter 10. The next one in there is they are deceived by, remember Balaam and Balak, they're deceived into going out into fornication. So they're deceived by Balaam into fornication. And I'm telling you, that's common to man. The people are going after their lusts towards fornication. Common to man. And then the last one in that that leads up to that is disbelief when God's asking you to do a big thing. They went to the promised land and there was disbelief and they couldn't go in. And I'm telling you, that's common to man. And your flesh in all those places says, I, I don't want to wait, I don't want to be patient. Your flesh is saying, I'm discouraged, I don't, I don't like the way it's going. Your flesh will say, I desire that, that, that lust over there. I desire that fornication. I, I, I'm going towards that thing over there. Your flesh will say, listen, I don't believe God can do something big in my life. I'm just going to stay back here. The flesh will do that. The, the spiritual man will say, listen, we can do it. I can wait on God. I can have patience. I don't have to be discouraged. I can trust in the Lord. The, the spiritual man can say, listen, I'm not going to go over there to that fornication and that fleshly thing. I'm not giving into my lust. The spiritual man will say, I can do great things through Christ. The flesh will say, no, it's not so. And there's a battle that's going on. And it's common to man. But this is what people do all the time when that comes up. And I've seen it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm really sick of seeing it in people is they do one of three things in this. One is they keep stumbling, so they say, I quit. And, and I've told you, if I've not told you once, I've told you a thousand times, I feel like, don't quit. Yeah, but preacher, I, I, keep, I keep having problems. Don't quit. Get up. Keep fighting. Keep wrestling. Keep fighting the fight. We're going to talk about that in a later, in a later message. But don't quit. You say, well, I, I sinned this week. Okay, get up, get it right, and keep going. Don't quit. This is what one people, one, they do this, they just quit, they give up. I'm tired of the fight, I give up. Don't quit. The second one is they begin to question whether they're even saved or not. Listen, if you, if you feel like I don't think I'm really saved, then let me tell you what you do. This is real simple. Get saved. Do what the Bible says. Re recognize you're a sinner. Confess that to him. I'm a sinner and that I believe Jesus Christ died for my sins. 
uh, was buried and rose again, and by faith I believe that to save me from my sins, and I want you my Lord and Savior. I'm not trusting anything else. I'm trusting in you and you alone to save me. And then after you get that settled, never question that again. What people do is, and sometimes it is because people are not saved, but let me tell you, there's sometimes there's saved people that are just not walking in the Spirit, and they are fighting their flesh. Because you've heard the old thing before about whichever one you feed, that's the one that's strongest. And so you're feeding your flesh all day, all night, all the time. Sometimes your, 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 uh, your devices will give you a report how many hours you've spent on your device this day or this week or this whatever, I and mean, you look at it, you think, my goodness, I can't believe I spent that much time. Folks, think about it. If, you'd have spent the same, if I would have spent the same amount of time in my Bible that I spent on a device, I would be walking in the Spirit. I'd be skipping in the Spirit and running in the Spirit. <laughs> We're feeding the wrong things sometimes. And so the flesh or the Spirit. And so sometimes they quit, sometimes they question, and sometimes this is one that I, I think is, is interesting. I thought about this afternoon is they quickly return back to the world. Remember when Israel went in, was headed for the promised land. Boy, they were, they were going and they hit something difficult. You know what they were quick to do? Let's just go back. Let's just go back to the way we used to be. You know how foolish, think about it. You know how foolish that is? Well, they got leeks and garlics back there. They have leeks and garlics, but they were killing your babies and beating you, and the bondage and the weight was too much for you back there. Now, folks, this is what people do. They say, it, it's, it's, it's tough. I'm trying to fight the fight, but it's tough. I think I'll just go back to living the way I used to, used to live. Folks, I'm telling you, don't do that. That's what they do. I, I, they start off, and, they, and they, they, something's wrong, and they just quickly run right back to the, to the old side. I'm telling you, don't go back there. There's nothing back there for you. You, you may think, is this what people do all the time? They, uh, I think about, I had a, a friend of mine that I, I used to know years ago. Good friend. I, I loved him. I served with him. Contacted me the other day, and I thought about all the good times we used to have. You know what you do? You remember all the great times you used to have back there in the world. You forget the hangovers. You forget all the nastiness that went in there. And I'm telling you you, you, you mark it down. There's nothing good back there in that. You just keep going forward with God. So they, they quit, they question, they quickly return back to the world. Or they quickly try to add in to say, well, i gotta have, I got to go back to the prison. If I can just get back into the prison, everything's clean. Yeah, but you're in prison. And what people do is they then start trying to pile on as many rules as they can. And so what you find somebody doing, they say, well, I'm having trouble um, not walking in the flesh. So what, what do I do? Well, I, I, become a, I become a monk, and I go get me a, a live out in the, in, up on a hill in a, in a little compound, in a commune, and, and I'm not around anybody, and I don't have a TV, and I, don't, and I don't have a cell phone, and I don't have internet, and I don't go to the store, and I don't go anywhere. And somebody delivers my food to my house, and... And all the things that you do, because I just, you see, that's not the way. It's, it doesn't say you won't feel the lust of the flesh if you will lock yourself up in chains in a closet. What it says is you won't feel the lust of the flesh if you were to learn how to be in the world but not of the world and walk in the Spirit. That's the answer. And so that's how the responses people normally do is one of those three. They quit, they question, or they quickly return or quickly bring themselves into some kind of bondage. But so the, the last P, it was the prison, and then it was the problem. But now I want you to look at the pattern, and that's in Romans chapter 6. Just very quickly, we'll go through a couple of these things, and we'll be done, is the pattern. And this is only, really only Sermon 1 in a series that will really, I promise you, be a blessing to your life if you will apply it. It won't be a blessing to your life if you're a hearer but not a doer. It will do nothing for you other than you'll listen to it and say, well, I like that point or I like that joke or I like what he said about Dairy Queen. But if you don't ever apply it to your life, this will do absolutely nothing for you. All right, so the pattern of the walk, what did Paul say? In Romans chapter 6 and verse 1, I have marked this, and, and, uh, and if, if, if you can, you probably ain't able to see this right now, but I've marked them in yellow, all the stuff, no, no, no knowing all those things. And so I mark them. And I'm going to tell you what you can do. Uh, just mark those when you go through. In, verse, in chapter 6, 
In verse number one, it says this, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that it's so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. We've talked about this in uh, great detail before that it's not talking about water baptism. It's talking about the spiritual baptism that's placing you into Christ. It's a spiritual thing. That's the same thing we read. We did it a while back in Galatians chapter 3, just past what we talked about by the schoolmaster. He talked about there's no bond. Uh, there's no uh, male, female bond or free Jew or Gentile. We're all baptized into Christ by the Spirit of God. That, that's what that is. And so in chapter, in chapter 6, so that's what we have. So it says, uh, verse number 3, Know ye, so you need to know something. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him in baptism and the death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified. Now you say, listen, I, my old man's crucified? Yes, you need to know this. Your old man is crucified. The old Eric Knight is crucified. It says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, and I, this is a, a, a word that I want to plaster across this church, the idea that, that from this time forward, I can live for Christ, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe, also, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being, de- being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So this is what he said. The first thing I want you to get is this. Under the pattern of the walk. What did he give us for a pattern? Here's the pattern for the walk. The first point under the pattern for how you walk. This will be several points when you come down the road. But the first one of the pattern of the walk is this. Realize who you are. He said you need to know something. You need to realize who you are. Mark that, write it down, put it in the notes of your Bible. You need to realize who you are. We spend so much time in this church going through this of who you are in Christ. Paul does that over and over again in every book that he writes. He spends time telling people who they are in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 1, he goes through all the in Christ. You're blessed in Christ. You're chosen in Christ. You're loved in Christ. You're accepted in Christ. You have an inheritance in Christ. You are sealed in Christ. By the Holy Spirit. You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Chapter 2, verse 6. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus and the good works. Ephesians 2, verse 10. And so all the things you have in Christ. And if you can know who you are in Christ, it'll affect how you walk for Christ. And that's the first thing. In Colossians, uh, that uh, Pastor Bishop is going through, they, he spends the first little bit of time saying, since I've heard of you, I continue to pray for you, that you would grow in your knowledge and wisdom and understanding, that you'd realize that, that everything has been made by Christ and that he is preeminent and that you would, uh, you would realize that he is in you. He's in you. Ephesians, I'm in him. In Colossians, that he is in me. And that I will go through conflicts, but I have been, in Colossians chapter 2, placed into Christ, the same baptism, baptized into Christ, so I can overcome all the issues in this life. You need to know who you are in Christ. One of the most important things you can get is who you are. Because if you can figure out who you are, then you can learn how to walk. And so he says, knowing, knowing, knowing in verse 3, uh, know in verse 3, in verse 6, know, knowing, and in verse number 9, knowing. You need to know this. You need to know that according to the Word of God, your old man is dead, and you are alive in Christ, and you do have the power to live the Christian life. You need to know that. All right, but then the second thing, so <clears throat> you need to realize who you are in Christ. Understand who you are. I am saved. I am a child of God. My sins are forgiven. I am a new creature, and I do have the Holy Spirit of God living. You need to know that. I would, if you were in here, I'd ask you, and you can do it at home, how many of you know you're a child of God? How many of you know that you have the Spirit of God living inside of you? How many of you know that? Raise your hand. If you don't, just get it right. 
You know it. Okay, good. Second thing under that. What does he say in verse number 11? Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. So, number one is realize who you are. The second thing is reckon it to be so. Reckon it to be, to be so means you need to just believe it, that it is so. This is the problem people have. I, I do this all the time, people. I, when I'm doing counseling, I use this a lot, and I'll say this. Do you know that you're a child of God? Do you? They say yes. Do you know you've got the Spirit of God living inside of you? Yes. Do you know that your old man is dead? Yes. Do you know that your new man's alive in Christ? Yes. Do you believe it? There's a difference between knowing it and then believing that it is so. There's a difference between me saying, do you know that God loves you? I know it. Do you believe that he loves you? Sometimes I don't know. What he's saying here is you need to know it, and then you need to believe it is so. You need to realize it, and then you need to reckon it to be so. Reckon is an accounting term saying, I've done all the the, the stuff here, and I've reckoned it. It is so. Reckon it to be so. Paul's mindset in the things we, in Galatians chapter number 2 and Galatians chapter number 6, Paul made some I am statements. He said, this is who I am. In Galatians 2.20, he says, I am, I am crucified with Christ. This is what he just said right here. You are crucified with Christ. Your old man's dead. Your new man's alive. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. I was counseling with somebody the other day, and they said, well, I think I'm, I'm, I'm having this problem in my life and this sin. I said, I want you to write down, I wrote it on a piece of paper, and I gave it to him, seven things I want to try to work on. And one of them, I said, I want you to tell yourself every day in prayer and tell God, I want you to say it out loud, I am not this person, I am this person in Christ. I am a child of God, and I do have the power of the Holy Spirit in me to overcome this sin. I am that person, and believe it to be so. And Paul said, I am, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He said, that's who I am. In Galatians chapter 6, and verse 14, he says, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. He said, that's who I am. My old man's dead, my new man's alive. The world has no more power over me, no more draw. I'm not, I'm crucified to the world, and the world's crucified to me. This is who I am. And so you need to realize it, who you are, and then you need to reckon it to be so. And the last thing, look at verse number, verse number 12 again. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. And, the mem- and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. I've got written in the next, next to that in my Bible is I need to know some things, reckon some things, believe it to be so, and I need to yield myself to some things. Stop yielding myself one way and start yielding myself another way. And so what I have written in for you to make it kind of easy to remember is first, realize who you are. Second, reckon it to be so. And the third is remove some things and replace it with the right things. Remove some things from your life and replace it with the right things in your life. I'm telling you, I counsel people all the time, and I say, listen, if you've got something you know is killing you, get rid of it. Listen, if I knew that I, I, went, to, <laughs> I went to somebody's house one time, we were going to go visiting, and there was somebody in front of me. I don't remember who it was in front of me. It was, like, I think, three of us that walked in the house. And um, as soon as we walked in the door, the guy in front of me stopped. So I'm going to break down. I ran into him, and I tried to like, get around him. And I went in, and there was a big snake on the floor eating a rat. And uh, this was their pet snake, eating a rat. And I thought, there's no way I'd have a snake in my house. But then I've heard people say, I've got a pet snake, and it bit me. It would have bit me once. It never Actually, it never would have made it in my house, number one. Number two, it would have bit me once, and then it would have been a belt or, a, a, or a something. It would have been a boot or a belt or something. It would never have done it twice. Listen, if you've got things in your life, and we all do, that are biting us, remove them. 
and replace it with the right stuff. Just get it out. I mean, if you know it's hindering your, your, your walk, if you know it's feeding you the wrong way, if you know it's hurting you, just say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that out of my life and I'm going to put the right things in my life so that I can start walking with God and feeding not my flesh but my spiritual man with it. Move some things and replace it with the right things. And that's what he, he's talking about here in this thing. And look at verse number 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law but under grace. What then? Shall we sin... Uh, <clears throat> shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace, God forbid? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were, that's who ye used to be, ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you, the, 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 the salvation doctrine that was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. That's who you are. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members as servants to uncleanness. That's what we used to do. I used to yield my members as a servant of uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity. But you know what he says? Even so now, put that away and put the right thing in place. Even so, now, yield your members, servants, to righteousness unto holiness. And then he says, for when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. And then here we are again, that's why I titled it Rotten Fruit. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. You know what adultery is going to do? Kill you and your marriage. What fornication is going to do? Kill everything. You sure anger is going to do and your wrath? Kill things. You know what love, joy, and peace, and long-suffering, and gentleness, and goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance does? Life. Harmony, sweetness, unity. Look, if we had that, we'd have some fruitful marriages, we'd have some fruitful homes, we'd have some fruitful churches. You say, well, I'll just try harder. That's not the way it goes. I'll just, what I'll do is I'll tape some fruit into my life. I'll just tape some plastic fruit. That's not the way it works. We need to all start walking in the Spirit so we can start having the fruit come out in our lives, not because I try harder, but because I'm walking with Him, and it just happens. It just starts happening. Verse 22, But now being made free from sin and become service to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Your fruit should be holy fruit, not dead, rotten fruit. You say, well, I wonder how come I'm having some issues in my life. Well, I would say it's probably because we're walking in the flesh more than walking in the Spirit. <clears throat> I'll give you one more verse in Romans 13 and verse 13. It says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Look, if you know that there's something around that you, that is a provision for you to fulfill your lusts, then remove that. You say, but just remove, no, replace it with the right thing that you could be doing spiritually to feed the spiritual man. Listen, if you know you're having problems, it's not a matter, I, I, there was a while back I was just not having a lot of joy, just finding I wasn't having a lot of joy. And, um, and so I told Stacy, I said, I just don't feel like I've got a lot of joy. And I, and I started thinking and meditating and praying and looking at it, and I felt like the Holy Spirit said, well, it's not a matter of you've got to try harder to have more joy. If you want joy, it's because you're not walking close enough to me. Because if you were walking with me, close enough with me, joy would come out, no matter what your circumstances were. Paul could have joy while he's in prison. So, it's not a matter of try harder, it's a matter of walking with the Spirit more. And we're going to talk about that. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about, we've talked about the prison and the problem and the pattern. We're going to talk about the provision God's given us to walk in the Spirit. How? How do I walk in the Spirit? We're going to talk about the provision. Then we're going to talk about the practice. How do I put this into practice really in my life? How am I going to do this? And so we're going to talk about that in the days to come, about how to, how to make this a reality in our life. But this is the first one. I, I, listen, I want you really, honestly, to take 
this sermon, take these notes. If you need me to email you the notes, I'll email you my notes. But, but get it and don't just hear it. Try to apply it. Maybe spend some time in a devotion this week going back over it. But try to apply it. Make it part of your life. And stick with all of these lessons that are coming up. And share these with other people. Well, we're doing a lot of stuff on Facebook now. Share it with other people so that other people can get this. Because I promise you, this, is, this would fix all counseling. This would fix all problems. This, I feel like, is one of the biggest problems in the church today. Is this. And it would be helpful. Let's pray together. Lord God, Father, we love you. We thank you. We ask you to bless and do a work in our lives and help us. Lord, um, <clears throat> I feel like Paul so many times in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing. And there's a will in me to do what's right and end up doing something that's wrong and not doing it the right way. But Lord, uh, the truth is we need to keep struggling and keep fighting. You told Timothy, or your word told Timothy, Paul did, and ultimately your spirit said it, that he had to flee youthful lust and follow after righteousness and fight the good fight of faith. Lord, there's going to be some things we're going to have to get away from, flee. There's going to be some things we're going to have to follow. We'll have to put, we'll have to remove some things and replace it with the right things. Flee from some lust and follow after some righteousness. And the truth of the matter is, we're going to have to fight sometimes. And a lot of times it's not with flesh and blood, but it's against our own flesh. It's not against other people, but against ourselves. And Lord, you've given us the power. You've given us every, the provision of everything we need. Well, we just got to put it, it's got to, this has got to be more important than what's on TV this afternoon. Lord, I'm not against entertainment, you know it, but this, th th in order to have fruit, we're going to have to walk with you. And I pray you'd help us to do that. I pray you'd give victory to every one of our people. I love them, Lord. I know I don't love them near as much as you do, and you want it. So, Lord, I pray you'd help us get a hold of these truths. Give me clarity of thought as I try to present them. Bless us and help us now, in Jesus' name, amen. Lord, please do the same for me. And 
I'm glad that I can tell you he's always given victory.